Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Will's Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wills. At the September 5 Freedom Day protest at uh, Melbourne Shrine of Remembrance, Victoria Police took unprecedented action to try and uh, prevent people attending and charge the uh, some of the organisers or the main organisers with incitement. Uh, one of the most uh, disturbing uh, arrests that went viral all around the world was of Ballarat mother Zoe Bueller on Wednesday the 2nd of September for organising a protest uh, in uh, in that regional city when they were at, uh, uh, at that time, stage three restrictions. Uh, on Friday, uh, James Bartolo from the Constitution Conscious Truth Network was uh, also arrested and charged with incitement. Uh, both of those uh, were, were captured on uh, video phone footage and uh, circulated, uh, but there were uh, two uh, incitement uh, arrests and, and charges on the Tuesday of that week, which weren't captured on camera. Uh, first, there was a 32-year-old man from Epping uh, that was charged with incitement. That was uh, Fanos uh, Panias. Uh, who is the, the founder of the, the 99% uh, Unite uh, Facebook group and movement, and a 28-year-old a man from Coburg was also charged. Uh, that uh, Coburg uh, man is my guest for tonight, uh, Anthony Kalouf, uh, who is the founder of Australians Versus the Agenda. Uh, he has worked as a personal trainer before the lockdown and also worked in the security industry. He was recently uh, featured uh, in the, the Channel 7 News Web only episode of their Spotlight uh, series. You can see the promo uh, image for that. Uh, Anthony, thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, intro. Now, uh, just I'd like to start by uh, getting an idea of what your life was like before uh, the coronavirus and the lockdown, because most of the, the anti-lockdown uh, activists I've, I've interviewed or, or come across uh, had normal lives and weren't that politically engaged before obviously their lives were turned upside down uh, uh, by uh, the, the the virus and lockdowns this year. So uh, just to give us a, an overview of yeah, what your life was like uh, until 2020. Yeah, so coming into the New Year's, my plans were to just kickstart my new business venture. I wanted to open up a gym. Um, I had a pretty detailed business plan ready to go, um, had partners that were already invested. And yeah, that was pretty much my project for the year. But um, coming into January and February, um, the news coming out of China showed us that there was something on its way. And I pretty much told anybody that would listen that um, I think that this year is going to be heavily disrupted. And lo and behold, in March, we get locked down and here we are. And I told people, um, I told anybody that would listen in September, um, this was going to continue on. And now we're in October. So I've even sort of far exceeded my own expectations. I told people back in February that this was going to run until about August, September. So yeah, but my, my life prior to this, I was just personal training through Fitness First. Um, and I was just on my own little venture with my own business ventures and yeah, just living a normal, comfortable life. But um, nothing's really comfortable at the moment. Now I saw uh, your page, uh, Australians versus the, the, the agenda, uh, when the, 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 the 5th of September Freedom Day uh, protest uh, was was going viral. It wasn't uh, just going to be a Melbourne uh, event. It was there. There were also uh, uh, events organised in in other uh, major cities. Uh, obviously, the uh, the the main uh, anti lockdown pro freedom group that had been uh, around most prominently uh, during the first lockdown was uh, ninety nine percent unite, which I mentioned. Fanos was one of the the founders of uh, so. Uh, Rafael Fernandez is also uh, basically his, his right-hand man uh, uh, with that. Uh, but I, I noticed as the lockdown dragged on and on, there were so many other different people and uh, groups uh, 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 opposing the lockdown, speaking up and uh, uh, organising 
uh, illegal uh, gatherings, uh, as uh, as uh, as we've been told, and uh, obviously the, the the fifth that gained uh, the support of uh, Thanos uh, and uh, James Bartolo, uh, Nick Patterson um, of uh, Empowerment Solutions, and also Rafael Fernandez. They were initially supportive but decided obviously with all the incitement uh, charges against attending or encouraging others uh, uh, to attend and uh, this was uh, we, have, we have to remember or well, it was a month ago now uh, that this was the day before father's day where dan was going to announce his roadmap out of lockdown which uh, has so far been a road to nowhere a lot of people thought that, oh, we were going to be set free on September the 14th uh, on that uh, Monday, how very wrong uh, people were. Yeah, well, I think people don't realise that Dana Andrews is a very Teflon individual. Like, I've been telling people for the last couple of months that he plays dumb, but he's incredibly intelligent. And I describe him as Teflon because that's how I would describe a mafia boss leader, like someone that just manages to avoid criticism and manages to avoid all the trouble that is thrown their way and does everything in their power to ma maintain a positive reputation, either for him in the public or in the eyes of his close associates. He, that's why I describe him as a Teflon man. And people don't realize just how intelligent and just like thorough and straight edge this man is. He's so intelligent in his execution. And I think that's why he's the perfect puppeteer, like the puppeteer for people to pull his strings, to pursue this agenda, which people often talk about. But um, with regards to the whole I guess, Freedom Day event. My involvement was, like, I, I, I ignore political politics. I ignore protests. I walked down, what is it, um, Melbourne Central Station, because I, I used to work at the Fitness First upstairs there, and you'd see protests occur in front of um, State Library, and I just walked past it. I ignored it. I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't really care. All of a sudden this has been dragged on for months and months and months and probably about four or five weeks before the protest was announced to be on the fifth i just blew my gasket i was just pissed off at how no one was doing anything i saw on the on the sidelines people were talking about doing something but no one executed and i was just like you know what screw it if no one's going to execute i'm going to execute and then in a way, I interjected into what other people's plans were, and that's how I got involved in the wider group. But um, yeah, I, I just got frustrated that no one was really taking the initiative to take advantage of the momentum that all these groups built. There was over 100,000 people in the um, Millions Rise for Freedom or Millions Rise for Australia group, um, and there were tens of thousands in other groups. And um, I think my role developed into just accelerating the movement because so many people were trying to fight for who's the leader, who's the person that's going to be the one to take the notoriety of being able to lead this movement. But um, the reason why I was able to interject and then accelerate the movement the way that it did accelerate, the way that it did in a way that it was it captured Channel 7 network, it, it captured all the main networks um, was because I made the Facebook page and then I also made the Facebook event completely anonymous. There was no tie to a name. There was no tie to an identity or a group. It was just completely anonymous. It was originally named as 500,000 people to end the Victorian lockdown. And that was the beauty about it. It was a faceless event. And then, yeah, yeah, I've got the photo here. The uh, you, you uh, were uh, selling on your your website uh, the the Guy Fawkes mask, which uh, in modern uh, popular culture uh, was was uh, made uh, famous by the uh, two thousand and five British movie V for Vendetta, which uh, uh, V 
uh, 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 fights fights against a a, a fascist uh, regime uh, with uh, the help of Evie, who is played by Hugo Weaving plays V, and Natalie Portman plays Evie. Yeah, like the the imagery behind the Guy Fawkes marks wasn't anything revolutionary for me. I was just basically taking advantage of an existing storyline that I could parlay with our current storyline. And they just worked in terms of the narrative perfectly with our situation. Um, and yeah, it was just a, it was just a feature of, um, sort of merging the storyline and the, the real life problems that we're suffering through at the moment with the storyline and the narrative in that film. And obviously the, the propaganda outlet in that uh, film is a, a British television network. And up until very recently, all of our mainstream media was egging Dan Andrews uh, on with the, 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 the lockdown, uh, shaming uh, uh, COVID idiots, uh, virus deniers, uh, anti-maskers. They, they egged him on to have the, well, at first it was a face covering mandate. It's now a mask mandate and to uh, introduce uh, stage four restrictions, and of course he uh, was 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 all too willing to to, to pull the trigger on those. Uh, but uh, as we've seen, he's not so willing to uh, let go of uh, this incredible uh, power that uh, he's he's got. Basically, I it, we we live our lives by his uh, daily uh, decrees. What he says at that uh, press conferences, which. I guess for somebody like you is so foreign that uh, your daily life is impacted by what uh, the premier says. Yeah, well, I didn't really give a shit what this guy was saying for a while, but as soon as it started to really impact my quality of life, that's when I started to feel like I needed to do something. And just naturally, I'm a very, very outspoken person and I have a natural sort of learned ability to be able to understand how to engage people and how to get people to take action. And um, I think that's what was really powerful with the people that ended up being the leaders of the movement. Um, we were people that know how to get people engaged and we know how to activate people in a way that um, takes that gets people to take action. So um, I think in terms of the people that were involved, um, we were all just regular people living our daily lives, trying to accomplish our personal um, goals throughout the, throughout the year. But um, as the year's gone on, more and more has politics become a part of our daily lives. And um, there's a quote that I saw recently where it's like, if you, if you don't take an interest in politics, politics will eventually take an interest in you. And that's what's happened to all of us, I think. Um, We've been so heavily impacted by the decision makers that um, it's forced them to get involved in our lives. But um, now we're here in the position where we're starting, we're starting to push back. And I think that the government doesn't like that when we push back. And that's why we're going to keep on going. Uh, it, it certainly wasn't on the ballot in the, the 2018 state election. I'm not sure how you're, you're voted. I don't expect you to, 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 to tell me, but definitely uh, living under a, a police state uh, in 2020 wasn't on the ballot in, uh, in, in 2018. And uh, probably most uh, Victorians were unaware that there were all these emergency powers, the, the Public Health and Wellbeing Act 2008, and the Emergency Management Act of uh, 2013 that could be utilised by the Premier just like that to basically turn them into a dictator. Well, that's that's exactly right. They, these are all legislation that I don't think anybody really paid attention to, but obviously these guys had it had the foresight to be able to plan everything ahead of time to be able to know what to execute and implement at the right time. So I give them full credit. Um, I'm an entrepreneur by nature, and um, having the foresight to be able to have these things ready to go, um, I give them kudos. But um, at the same time, they've got it pretty easy because they have unlimited resources, they have unlimited time, they have unlimited money, and um, it just makes for easier decision making. People like myself, we're just grassroots, 
self-made people that are just hoping to be able to get the plan together the best of our ability and then hoping that it executes the right way. And um, I think that's that sort of parlayed into why it was a bit of a struggle at the beginning with um, one, the power struggle, but two, also just figuring out how we were going to um, plan this protest in a way that we were going to get the biggest possible gathering. Um, if Dan Andrews went on to the press conference tomorrow and said, this weekend on Saturday, I give full permission for a million people to gather at Parliament House, there you go. He will get a million people at the drop of a dime. But we've got social media and that's pretty much it. And not only that, they're doing everything in their power to try to intervene and shut us down and close our groups. Um, so one, our resources aren't as, um, aren't as rich as theirs. And then two, they can do whatever they want in terms of trying to limit our ability on executing as well. So we've been struggling, but, um, I think at this stage of, um, the timeline, I think human nature more than anything is starting to take over. So I think the, the, the pressing nature of me having to try to educate and, um, get more people informed of what's going on is starting to not be as important to me because human nature is starting to take over where people are just reaching their personal thresholds. And that, that's awesome. I, I kind of wish that people reach, reach their personal thresholds earlier, but, um, you know, I'm glad that it happened at least now. Thank God. Hopefully by the end of the year, they lose all control of the entire population. And then we can just go on with our lives to kind of arrest everybody. The week before uh, the September 5 Freedom Day, that's when Assistant uh, Commissioner Luke Cornelius, who is uh, uh, commonly uh, referred to uh, by his uh, nickname Chief Wiggum, uh, we haven't seen him much uh, re recently, got up and, and called uh, the uh, anti-lockdown uh, movement uh, batshit crazy uh, tinfoil hat wearing amongst other uh, 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 insults and uh, that was the the prelude to the following week of uh, incitement uh, charges which uh, as I mentioned you and Fanos were, were hit on the Tuesday uh, now just describe what that what well, well uh, they, they came at uh, 6 a.m so what that day was like yeah so for me personally I'm a night owl, so I was up until maybe two o'clock that morning. And then I get a big bang on the door at six o'clock that morning. I didn't wake up to open up the door. My younger brother opened up the door, um, got welcomed by five police officers, all um, not in traditional Victoria police uniforms. Um, they identified themselves as Victoria police, but um, they were the one that I liaised with at the time. He was, um, his name is Jamie. Um, he, um, he's a, I think he's an informant, maybe like an investigator or something, but, um, yeah, I, I liaised with him. I didn't, I was actually put in handcuffs, which, um, sort of diminishes the, uh, nature of the arrest in the eyes of a lot of people that I've spoken to, but, um, yeah, I was under arrest. Um, they went through my bedroom, um, surveyed all my stuff, opened up boxes that were packages. They took. What did they take? They took my laptop that I'm currently using. They took my iPhone. Um, so that was those two primarily, piece, primary pieces of um, electronics. And then they also took two Guy Fawkes masks that I had um, on my desk. And then they also took some Australia Post packaging that I was that I bought to post those packages um, for the Guy Fawkes masks. And then. Unfortunately, they also took some cannabis off me, which I'm mostly upset about because um, I just bought that bag. <laughs> so I got actually I got slapped with the cannabis charge as well. If nobody knew that, I got slapped with the cannabis charge, which is probably the charge that is, is going to actually stick with me. The incitement charge, I'm almost certain, will drop <laughs> with the cannabis charge. Unfortunately, I'll probably get a caution for it. Well, with uh, James Bartolo, he collects swords uh, just for uh, display aesthetic purposes and so when they uh, they raided arrested and charged him they also uh, charged charged him with uh, possession of uh, weapons 
uh, as well. So they, they obviously, if they find other stuff there, um, they, they, they throw the book at you. Um, that'll be interesting in regard to, to James if that charge uh, stands up, given that he just keeps them for display purposes, obviously. With you being caught with an illicit substance, that's a, that's a bit different. But yeah, I'm not surprised that they, they slapped you with that as well. And uh, you're also uh, interviewed by the uh, police. You've got a copy of the police interview, which you can't post yet. Uh, I know that one of the early uh, people who was uh, charged with incitement, uh, Sol, he posted his on, on, on online. I'm not sure what sort of the legalities are because you posted a screenshot on your Facebook profile. Yeah, I actually, um, during my five hour stint at Faulkner police station, I spoke to, um, spoke to Jamie about it, the uh, informant. And I go, Hey, I know souls uploaded it online. Am I allowed to upload my one? And, um, my one wasn't as colorful as his one. His one was fantastic, but, um, they told me that he wasn't actually allowed to do it, but, um, they didn't tell him that he wasn't allowed to do it before he did it. So it wasn't exactly his fault. Um, but yeah, they told me that I wasn't allowed to upload it and, um, the only reason I uploaded that screenshot mainly was because it was the Victoria Police Remembrance Day on that day, and I have the utmost disrespect for the Victoria Police at the moment. So I actually captioned that um, with F the Police, and um, it was just a screenshot of myself sitting down, absolutely buggered at six o'clock in the morning, waiting to find out what the hell was going to go on. Yes, Police Remembrance Day was on uh, September uh, 29th, uh, which I, I saw that it was in the uh, the, cal the calendar, or Blue Ribbon Day as it's also uh, known, and I, I wondered, uh, I think that Blue Ribbon sales are probably going to be significantly down uh, this year, and a lot of people who might normally uh, acknowledge it would uh, be feeling uh, quite uh, uneasy uh, or conflicted about it? Yeah, I, I think there's a growing resentment between the public and the police, and I don't see it changing anytime soon, if ever. There's a rich history in Victoria of corruption in Victoria Police that um, I think most the old, most of the older generation are well aware of the, um, the corruption that's gone on in that, in that organisation. And... Um, yeah, they're, they're gonna they're gonna be facing a lot of backlash and a lot of um, public resentment. And I think if I was to forecast another thing coming up in the future, um, because I've been forecasting a lot of certain events over the last seven months, and 90% of them have come true. I think if nothing changes on the 18th of October, coming up with his uh, next announcement, there's going to be a massive shift in civil disobedience. And like I said before, it's not going to be anything that I'm endorsing or anybody else is endorsing. It's just going to come from human nature. People are going to get to these certain milestones that Dan Andrews sets for us. And people are going to be like, fire out, man. You said four more weeks. We gave you four more weeks. You said two more weeks. We gave you two more weeks. You said six more weeks. We gave you six more weeks. How much more of your life do you want to take over? And I think... The 18th of October is going to be a very important day for Mr. Teflon because if he doesn't give the people what they want, they're going to take it for themselves. And I forecast that a lot of business owners are going to just open up. I forecast that a lot of people are just going to be like, screw the mouse mandate. They're going to just take off their mask like bloody hell, it's almost 30 degrees today. Everyone that I saw in the area was not wearing a mask. Um, and I think civil disobedience is going to get to the point where it takes over. And like I said, it's nothing that I'm endorsing publicly, but um, God bless human nature because human nature will eventually take over. So watch out, Teflon, man. Make a smart decision. Uh, there was that uh, uh, exchange he had uh, at the beginning of this week with the uh, Australian's Rachel Blacksendale, uh, Dan Andrews, when uh, she said, well, what, what's the, uh, uh, why are you requiring uh, uh, people in regional Victoria uh, to wear a mask uh, when they're outside, when they're the only person within a kilometre? And he said, oh, what's the issue, uh, uh, Rachel? Like, he 
the, he put the presu- he put the uh, presumption on her uh, to basically that he, he it wasn't up to him to justify his uh, mask mandate, his decree. It was up her to disprove it. And uh, in Maljura today, uh, it's around about thirty five degrees, no active cases there yet. They've still got the the mask mandate there. Uh, the fine uh, for, for not wearing a, a mask uh, without a, a lawful excuse is, is $200, so it's sort of at the, the lower uh, end. Uh, but uh, people, uh, on, on the whole, uh, if they're uh, legally required to wear a mask, uh, uh, they, they, they do, uh, even though it's uh, when, it, when it's warm, you get so dehydrated, sweaty, and... Uh, dry throat, you almost feel like you have coronavirus symptoms when you're wearing a, a mask on a hot day. Yeah, well, I, I bought a mask originally, but for the most part, I bought it because I just wanted to support the gym that was printing them out, and it was a pretty cool style. In terms of um, the mask mandate, I think, again, Mr. Teflon Dan is going to have to come to the point where he makes a very um, sort of calculated decision in deciding that the mask mandate is no longer set and it's more um i think the smart move for him and i'm happy to give the man advice because either way the house's cards are falling um i think that he should probably change it to a um sort of a precautionary measure where you only wear them when social distancing measures and hand hygiene measures and all the other basics are applicable um so if you're in a busy store or something like that um, as for the the temperature and all the other excuses that people have to come up with, well, I think it's going to get to a point where people are just not going to have to come up with excuses because we're coming into the hotter weather. What 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 reasonable person, if these police want to regain the respect of the public, is going to get upset about someone not wearing a mask in thirty plus deg- degree heat? Like seriously. At that point, common sense better prevail. Otherwise, people are going to start hurting the police back with either their words or with fists because people are going to get upset. People are going to get upset. And I, I'm not, again, I'm not endorsing violence against police, but they're probably one bad decision away from upsetting the wrong person at the wrong time. And then someone will snap back. And I just hope that that doesn't happen to them because, you know, they're trying to repair their public image, but. People are pissed off, man. People are pissed off. And I've had some high profile people reach out to me. I've had bikies reach out to me. I've had some of the most prolific people in Melbourne reach out to me and say, Hey, what can I do? How can I help? How can we make a change? How can we get Dan Andrews out of this box seat? And, um, I don't, I don't want to engage with them because I don't want to endorse violence. I'm not a violent person, but, um, I'm a very strategic person and it's going to get to the point where the police and the government are going to have to make sensible decisions. Otherwise you just upset the wrong people at the wrong time and people will get aggressive back at you. And, um, it's going to be interesting. I think the, uh, what's it called? The daily mail compared us to the Royal. I think it was the Eureka stockade. Um, who knows, man, there might be violence between the Victorian people and the police again. We saw uh, when the, the face covering mandate first came in that uh, Victoria police uh, officer choke a, a woman who uh, wasn't uh, wearing, a, wearing a mask, even though she had uh, uh, an exemption. Uh, he was later cleared by uh, police professional standards. Uh, there, there's obviously still outstanding that, uh, well, it's been referred to, to IBAC, the, the broad based anti corruption. Uh, uh, board the 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 stomp uh, on the head of that uh, uh, mentally ill man who uh, couldn't get a, a hospital bed, so he just had a had a breakdown, stomped on the head by that officer, and also uh, hit 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 by a police vehicle uh, as well. That uh, that footage was also uncovered by by Paul Dowsley. He seems to be bloody everywhere uh, as the the main Channel Seven uh reporter but yeah there it's uh, there's been numerous incidents of of heavy handedness which is you a lot of people have wondered is it deliberately designed to install fear in the rest of us to 
obey the rules as well as uh, Dan has sometimes said uh, himself if if that is the case to sort of it's very uh, disturbing that governments when they u deliberately use fear uh, explicitly to uh, get compliance yeah what's his name um so Robert F Kennedy jr during his speech in Berlin he goes, it doesn't matter what type of society it is, whether it be a capitalist society or um, I think he said a communist society or whatever he compared it to. The only thing that a government needs to take control of its people is fear. And that's what they've done. They've won the networks, the, the news networks have monetized fear because I think no bigger time than in history they are making big bucks off monetizing the news every night and the the skyrocketing viewership, um, their desperation to engage with people just like myself, just to get more numbers. Um, the, um, the government being able to use the media in any way that they wish to deliver a certain message to perpetuate and enhance the fear. It's, um, it's a very powerful tool. And um, I think that's the reason why Australians and Australia in, as a country was such an easy target is because for the most part, people here acquiesce, as um, David Icke would say, um, people are just, they're just, they become subjects of whatever the decision making um, is. Like even my, um, my parents, they, they watch TV as if it's like religion whatever happens on the TV, they take it as gospel. And I, I'm trying to tell them every day, don't, don't believe what they tell you. You gotta, you gotta do your own research. You gotta, you gotta look for the narrative that they're not telling you. What they're telling you on the TV is just a way for them to distract you. You gotta find the narrative that they're not showing on TV. That's what their real intentions are. But, um, I guess, um, yeah, they, they were very successful in one, monetizing fear and two, utilizing fear as a way to control people. But um, like I said, man, human nature will take over. Uh, now, after you were charged uh, with incitement, you were, you were both you and Fanos were given a, a gag order until uh, the, the day after uh, the September 5 uh, protest, uh, though you recorded a a brief uh, message uh, to your your Facebook followers uh, to basically confirm that what well, you were the the twenty eight year old in in Coburg. I'll, I'll just play that uh, for our audience now. I'm all good. I'm all good. Everything's all good. I hope the uh, young man from Epping is all good as well. The young man from Coburg is all good kind of pissed off I got a visit at fucking 6 a.m. in the morning but you know whatever just want to make sure that everyone's all good and um what can I say and what can I not say I've basically got a gag order on me let's put it that way guys so I'm telling you something man It, it's only until it happens to you that you realize just how serious and how corrupt the system is. This happening to me didn't have to wake, wake me up because I was already awake. I hope that this doesn't happen to you, but if it does happen to you, it's going to really traumatize you and it's going to hurt your feelings and it's going to make you really, really think, fuck, why didn't I say something earlier? I hope you guys realize how bad this is going to get if you don't do something about it. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not allowed to tell you what to do. I'm not even allowed to go to the CBD. I'm not allowed to move anywhere. But I'm telling you guys right now, you need to fight for your freedom. Because if you don't defend your freedom, you're going to lose it. Take care, everybody. Police continue to target rally organisers and promoters. Three individuals have so far been charged with incitement. Anthony Kalouf had been urging others to join him until police knocked on his door earlier this week. I've been charged with incitement. Um, I've, I've been uh, bailed and I have bail conditions. 
that um, I have to follow, which the main condition is to not go to the protest, which I fully respect. I won't be going and I'm not allowed to go. The personal trainer hasn't been able to work and says the protest is about lockdown fatigue. My case is only just one case of a growing majority of people and if, if they don't do anything about it soon, we're going to start fighting back and I think this is what the protest is about. Uh, so you've now got this uh, incitement charge hanging over your head. When is uh, your magistrate's court appearance? I know that uh, Zoe's, as she said, hers is in January. Uh, James Bartolo, his is not until, I think he said, May. Yeah, um, for, from my understanding, myself and us and Solly all have ours on the same day. I think it's the 4th of February. But... Um, I'm almost certain that the charges will get dropped prior to that because one, I don't know about the other guys, but I've got a fantastic lawyer that I'm in consultation with. And um, I think number two, the more important thing that's come out recently is that there's a Swinburne article from someone. Yes, uh, Professor. Uh, court, uh, saying that we were Australia's first political prisoners. So um, yeah, that's an interesting that piece that um, I saw recently. Yeah, that's from Professor uh, Mirko uh, Bagarek, who's well. He's been a long time uh, a commentator in in the in the media, uh, law professor at, at Swinburne. Certainly, uh, no uh, fringe legal legal. And there's been a lot of other uh, legal uh, uh, experts who've questioned the the use of the incitement uh, charge against uh, uh, those who've incited others to defy the Chief Health Officer's directions, given that, uh, well, protesting is not normally a crime, and also the incitement charge is used uh, against people who've uh, incited others to commit serious uh, criminal offences, such as uh, murder and terrorism. Well, that, that's exactly right. and. Like, I've got, I've got the quote that I posted from that article, um, which was really important. It said, meaning that Australia has witnessed the detention of its first political prisoners. Um, I don't really care about that, but I, I took that as a compliment because I didn't even know that Australia never had political prisoners up until this happening to us. So I, I'm going to put that on my resume. Australia's first political prisoner. That's that's amazing. But um, not only that, just the fact that it's... um. It's, uh, what is it? it says the High Court is likely to free the COVID political prisoners. Um, it, it might be an easy easy day for my for my lawyer because he might not even have to do anything um, because, you know, there's all these High Court rulings. There's, um, I think uh, Abi Yemeni, he's working with the Supreme Court pursuing the police on his arrest. Um, he's also got the, the Fight the Fines uh, website as well. Yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty sure he'll be pursuing... Um, litigation against the Victoria Police as well, um, like personal personal libel um, against uh, liability charges against them for the arrest. Um, him being a journalist it makes it a bit more high profile. And um, yeah, it's just interesting to see the developments. Like I said, one, human nature for how people respond publicly and two, um, just, just nature itself and you know evolution the evolution of this situation is slowly developing into our favor one we're de slowly evolving into the majority um and two the evolution of all these mandates and all these politicized issues that they're trying to use to stronghold the country and the uh, population all of a sudden the true legalities of it is starting to unfold and unravel and um I'm not upset that I got arrested. I, I'm actually quite excited for what's to come because I, I wish myself and everyone else that got arrested very well in um, pursuing a hopefully a handsome payday. I know that uh, uh, the Institute of Public Affairs and, and Libby Works have organised a, a legal uh, fundraiser for Zoe Bueller, obviously. She being a, well, a, a mother and a, a, a pregnant woman, she's sort of a, a more, uh, you would say, uh, uh, vulnerable a, a face than sort of somebody like you and, and Fenos, a young, uh, fit young 
uh, personal uh, 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 trainers, but uh, obviously you're all facing the, uh, the the same charge. And if her charge gets thrown out, then so does yours and and Fanos's and and James uh, as well. Yeah, well, I think in terms of everyone and their own personal charges, um, we're all going to pursue it individually. Um, it looks like the police are trying to coordinate it as myself, Fanos and Sol as the um, sort of like the, uh, the th not the three stooges, but like the, the three people that um, sort of like a gang, the gang of three that um, were the most prominent organizers of the event because they've grouped us three as um, as one on the same court day at the same time. It looks like that's what their intentions are. It doesn't look like the they tried to separate the dates. Um, it looks like they've tried to make it look like us three, uh, the the three main organizers and make us look stupid in front of the magistrate. But um, like I was saying before, I don't think this is even gonna front the magistrate. At this point, it's gonna be, you know, us being the, <laughs> the people that are gonna be in front of the verses when we're charging the police and probably charging the state as well. So, um, the tides will turn very quickly and um, we'll see what happens. Uh, now, can I get uh, a, your view on the, the coronavirus or COVID-19 uh, as it's uh, technically referred to? Uh, because obviously uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's fair to describe it as a, a new strain of uh, influenza. It's worse than the flu, uh, given that it is, it's a evolved uh, uh, a virus, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's been well pointed out that the survival rate for, for most groups is over uh, 90%. Uh, but uh, can I just get your, uh, your perspective on the, the virus itself? Uh, well, with my experience as a, as a trainer and, you know, I have a degree in health sciences. My understanding is that coronavirus has just become something that is quickly become politicized. It went from an initial health crisis where there was a scaremongering campaign coming out of China, where you saw people just collapsing on the streets and it made everyone think, oh crap, we got to take action. So we took the initial action of locking down this, all the states and the, um, the international borders. But um, very quickly, it's become a politicized tool and utility for all the state government leaders to be able to um, pursue their own personal agenda. And, you know, I think Queensland is not doing anything with their border restrictions until the day after the election. What a coincidence. Yes, November 1, yeah. Um, you know, it's become a politicized utility. It's no longer about health. This this almost was never about health. How many times has Dan Andrews come up and said, go and get sun, go get some vitamin D, eat a healthy diet, go exercise. You know, they're trying to make people fucking battery hens sitting inside their bedroom 22, 23 hours a day with no vitamin D exposure, with no ability to exercise, can't go to the gym, can't do anything mm. to enhance your health. When was this ever a health issue if you're not endorsing healthy habits? You know, you have the most like outspoken politician and premier in Dan Andrews. You have the ability to engage people on a daily basis in the most like outspoken way possible and you can make such a positive impact on their lives by endorsing all these healthy habits and yet you politicize it and you only pursue your own interests that's why people are starting to resent this man that's why people are starting to resent all of their public um premiers and all their chief ministers and all these you know uh, chief health officers we're all starting to resent them all because this went very quickly from a health issue to a political issue and they're all pursuing their own personal agendas and they're not doing anything to actually show that this is still a health issue and people people aren't dumb people are waking up to this and i think like i said human nature will eventually take over and people are just going to make decisions for themselves and um 
God bless those people, man. God bless Victoria because it's been a long time coming. Well, we were told uh, six months ago when uh, the, the first wave uh, was uh, spreading throughout Australia that uh, we just need the lockdowns to, to flatten the curve so we can uh, prepare uh, our health system. That was the, the deal. And uh, I uh, accepted that given that we didn't know much about the, uh, uh, much about the virus at the time because of the, the disinformation campaign from communist China. Fast forward six months, we know a lot more about the virus. And now we have, even though the official national cabinet policy is suppression, Dan Andrews basically pursuing an elimination strategy. And I went through the stats at the beginning where we have, what is it, 34 in hospital now. He basically wants to eliminate the virus. He keeps saying we can't open up yet. And he said about the St Kilda Beach people today, just a, just a few more weeks, how many times have we, uh, uh, we heard that? It it's either seems we're not going to be able to get to normal unless, well, the virus is eliminated, which is possible, or, or there's a vaccine, uh, which is also possible. Man, to be honest, I don't think... I think his stronghold on the population in Melbourne and Victoria is very quickly going to wane away. Um, he, I, I guess he, he did his best to try to try to um, pursue this fast track agenda throughout the colder periods because it's a much easier time where people aren't susceptible to going out, um, even just going out to the beaches in the sun, even though there's no sort of venues to go out to, um, people are more inclined to go to the beach in a, in a weather, hot, hotter weather than, um, cold weather. And, um, I think that's, that's where all these, you know, the, the elites and all these political leaders have dropped the ball. One, they've tried to pursue this agenda very quickly in, you know, six, seven months, they've tried to fast track an agenda that looked like it had a timeline of at least a couple of years. And, um, you know, people aren't dumb, you know, we, even, even the, the most sort of, um, hesitant people to figure out what was really going on at the time have started to realize that this is no longer about health and, um, they're gonna they're gonna lose the stronghold on on the population very soon with the hotter weather coming up and two just the fact that there's a lot of pushback now um i don't see the omnibus bill passing um anytime soon and i think that if it does pass the civil disobedience that i was talking about earlier is only gonna accelerate tenfold i think that if the bill passes the next day there's gonna be an avalanche coming towards the state parliament because people are going to be pissed off if this happens um but yeah we'll just we'll just see where the chips fall and they'll fall as they may well as i said in my introduction uh the the hot weather is virus uh frying uh weather you, you you're hardly going to to, uh, to catch a a virus on a 35 degree day out in the the open air you're more likely to say get a get a get a virus if uh the, the ventilation system inside is not uh, clean with its cycle. Look, I, I don't, I'm not like an epidemiologist. I don't know nothing about viruses. I know nothing about that stuff, but oh, that's a, honest, no, I really care. Care. Like, I've been okay. going out for the last five months trying to find the virus. I, I've gone out for the last five months, not wearing a mask, not, you know, not really being too sort of aware of what my, hygiene is like, like if I'm sneezing, I'll sure, I'll, you know, cover my mouth and you know, I'll wash my hands, but you know, I won't like every, every second shop that I go into, I'm introduced by a security guard that wants me to get my temperature taken and fucking put another handful of hand sanitizer. I'm not hand sanitizing my hands 12 times a day. I'm not going to do any of that crap. I literally tell these people to get stuffed, you know, and it, that, that's like I was saying before, human nature will eventually take over. And these people that are there, these people that are positioned to, in, you know, enforce these point of entry restrictions, even they're going to get to the point where they can't be bothered. 
enforcing it. I, I've done security, man. If I was the guy that was facing me and I was, you know, told, hey, no, I'm not going to put hand sanitizer on my hand. I've already sanitized my hand five times today. And no, you're not taking my temperature because you're no fucking doctor. You know, I'm going to get to the point if I'm encountering that same that same person five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day, I'm going to get to the point where I'm going to be like, screw it, I can't be bothered enforcing this crap. I'm just going to let people walk in. And that's the thing. Human nature will take over. And Dan Andrews, <laughs> you've got to make some smart, smart decisions if you want to have control of the population because if you don't, you're going to, it's going to slip away. And um, I don't know that this man is smart enough to, to control the population for much longer. So um, I mean, he's, he, he's definitely uh, uh, got skill as a, a control freak and a political uh, operator. But uh, uh, in terms of uh, his uh, well, uh, uh, common sense approach, he likes to talk about common sense a lot. He doesn't seem to, uh, <laughs> to uh, practice much of it in his policies. Obviously, you're limited to the, the activism you can in, engage in, but you certainly haven't been silenced uh, since uh, you were charged with the in, incitement. Uh, you've basically, on, on your Facebook profile, just been uh, uh, communicating to uh, your followers uh, just uh, uh, how out of control the Victorian police state is and the, the inconsistency of the the, the rules, uh, the restrictions, and also the, the outright lies uh, from Dan. Look, growing up, I've lived with resentment all my life because my father wasn't there for me. But one thing that I was born with as a gift of those circumstances was the ability to be able to use that resentment as a powerful tool to achieve my goals. So every time I feel a bit of, you know, I feel not like I don't have the motivation or the willingness to achieve certain things. I go back to that part of my mind and my heart where I feel resentment from the people that I thought that were there for me. And I, I use that as a utility to motivate me. And one thing that I've been using as my, utility with my Facebook post, for example, is I'm trying to build people's resentment for Dan Andrews, because if I can continue to build people's resentment towards this man, eventually they will turn on him and they will look at him as someone that they do not like anymore, they don't, that they can't not trust anymore, and then they'll eventually give up on this man. And the more that I can build that resentment in people's hearts and minds, the more the tide will turn. Um, but yeah, it, it, the, these things are just utilities, man. And eventually human nature will take over and eventually the, uh, the majority, the silent majority will no longer be silent and we will be the outspoken ones. Uh, there's still the, I, I stand with Dan, uh, crowd amazingly though, uh, they're, they're, they're certainly losing their, their stranglehold on at least their, uh, their, their, their main platform, which is, is social media. And you just sort of wonder with these people, how much lockdown is satisfactory for them? How much longer are you willing to, because a lot of these people, they would be arts and hipsters and all those people used to going out and, and that, and you just sort of wonder, are, are you that much of a, a, a devotee that you're just willing to, to live like this forever if Dan says so? Nah, pe people eventually will eventually break out of this spell. And um, I think the, uh, the spell is almost going to wear out. I, I think that his milestone date of, um, was it October 18th? If nothing really changes at that point, I, I see a lot of business owners just cracking open the doors of their businesses and start making decisions for themselves. So um, Dan Andrews needs to be very, very intelligent with his next decision-making um, process because like I've been engaged with a lot of high profile business owners and um, they, they told me even, I think it was what, September 13th when the original state of emergency powers was supposed to end that they were going to open up on that day, but obviously they've acquiesced and um, sort of 
played to Dan Andrews' um, spell, but um, I'm almost certain that this is going to be the last of their um, sort of uh, bit of string that they give this man before they open up their doors. And I can't wait to see that, man. I can't wait because I've been hanging to go to a coffee shop for a while. Uh, well, uh, as always, it's what is it? The the waiting game. The yeah, the another Sunday uh, Dan decision day on uh, October eighteenth. Uh, we'll all have to hold our breath again. I've appreciated you, Anthony, uh, telling uh, your story uh, to myself and uh, my audience uh, tonight. And uh, if uh, people want to, I'll put it up on the screen again. Uh, see you on the uh, Seven News Spotlight. It's is it still pinned to the uh, Seven News Facebook page? Um, I haven't checked it recently, but I'm pretty sure it is, mm. and it's um it's done pretty good views. I think across all platforms, it's done about a quarter of a million views, so it's doing pretty well at the moment. And it's also on uh, Seven News YouTube as well, and uh, I uh, put the the link. Uh, to it uh, in the uh, description and uh, we'll follow uh, yours, uh, Thanos' and Soul's uh, incitement uh, case when uh, it's heard uh, in February. Uh, hopefully by then uh, the uh, the court uh, courts uh, are back properly open uh, because that is also a, a function of our uh, uh, democracy, open open justice. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, we'll do our best to uh, follow uh, follow your hearing uh, when it happens. And yeah, uh, I would encourage people to also follow you on Facebook uh, to uh, check out your thoughts and perspective on what's who knows what's going to happen in the next week or week or so. And yeah, uh, stay safe and, and stay sane is uh, the sort of catchphrase that uh, I and uh, my colleagues have at the moment. No, I appreciate your time. And um, yeah, if anyone wants to uh, contact me, they're free to contact me on my Facebook. I'm quite active on it. And um, I'm going to be sharing a lot more updates on the developments um, over the next couple of weeks. So it's going to be an interesting time for all of us. But um, yeah, I appreciate it, man. Yep, take care. Thanks, man. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows. And to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.